All right, I've had a lot of interest in the little room that me and my wife put together to house our critters. And I've referred to it as the lagoon room. We, uh, my saltwater fish was getting a little big and we was trying to come up with the most economical thing to do with them without getting rid of them or going broke trying to house them. And I come up with this room. It's, I built it in my garage. It's half inch styrofoam wallboard and it was, I got it from Lowe's, it's about six bucks a sheet. The most expensive thing was actually this door. Doors are outrageous. I, there was a couple others I really wanted, but the price point just wasn't there for sure. On the inside, it's, it's two by four framing. As you can see, nothing fancy. And covered it with the wallboard. And I essentially made a big cooler in my garage. And like I say, this is going to be the second winter. During the summer, I run that AC unit. It comes on and off, you know, of course, on thermostat. I've got the probe located in the pond. So the main, my main thing is I didn't want this with these rays to get over 80 degrees. These are California round rays. They don't like hot temperatures. Uh, and during the winter, all I've run is this oil field radiate, radiator style heater. And during the hottest months, it got to 80 degrees in here. It was the hottest that I saw it. During the coldest last year when we had in the teens, I think 72 degrees was the coldest. This morning it was like 32. And uh, let me get this temp gun out, I'll show you. If you can see that, it's still 74. The pond water, the hottest I've seen it has been 78. It's, it stays pretty, pretty consistent at that level. During, but during the hottest months and the coldest months, it's cost me about on average 100 bucks extra on my electric bill and I have LEDs on every light I can run and that you know to actually brighten it up and have used heating pads and such on everything else during normal months though it's around it runs about 65 70 bucks extra to run this room but it, to me it's really worth it everything's out here together I don't have tanks strode all through the house uh, another thing everybody was really curious about was the filtration of the pond. Now, I've kind of got what I call a reverse sump setup going on here, guys. I don't know if you can see it, because I've got the water turbulent right this second, but there's a 1,450 gallon sump pump, and I've got it suspended about midway, so if I were to have a leak, I don't want it down low, so at least I would maintain some water in here. Just knock on wood, nothing like that's ever occurred. It goes up and through the wall and into my sump adjacent to this wall that I'm going to show you. And then from there, it is gravity fed back into the pond. Now, I want to add another return. I've had to dub down the water because I don't have a big enough return. I really wish I'd have went with a two inch pipe on everything instead of the inch and a half. But I'm probably going to just add another return and that should help. But this setup here has been fine. I say it's been running for a solid year with no issues. This is just a rubber made 300 gallon cattle trough from Tractor Supply. It was about 250 bucks. I mean, if you try to buy an acrylic tank at 300 gallons, even remotely close to the size, this thing is six foot in circumference, you would definitely go broke unless you got some deep pockets. I built the fascia just out of landscape timbers. Picked up this at a Hobby Lobby, I believe it was, on, on our travels. And built, of course, the, the post here is just nothing more than landscape timbers and some rope. And found the, the pelican at a Hobby Lobby and just other little tidbits that we picked up along the way. Got up ordering the palm trees, was the cheapest way to get those, was just ordering them. 
and this light is just a satellite uh, I really love the remote if you can dim it down and you do you do little lightning storms with the kids like sunrise sunset settings in here so if you had a hard day at work you can just pull out a folding chair kick back and drift away you're kind of in the jungle for a minute we'll move on and I'll show you the trough on the outside where all the filtrations housed and also on the inside of here I have a couple of power heads you know just get the flow up um, when you really want to view them I'll turn the flow down on the power heads And over here on the outside is where I, I call it my sump. I've got it elevated on an old aquarium stand I had. This is just a 100 gallon Rubbermaid, same kind of trough. To help keep the heat in, this is a piece of three quarter styrofoam board, same as what I built the room. And I just stick some stuff on top to help hold it flat. In here, I hope there's enough light for you to see. I went to the dollar store and picked up some of these kitchen tubs, sink tubs from the dollar store. Drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom. This pipe comes from the pond. You can see there's a bunch of holes drilled for air exchange. Goes through the filter media into this bucket and the bucket's full of live rock. I had to turn the water flow down because it was coming up way too high. That's where I was saying I wish I'd have done the two inch um, but over here this is my doubler it just takes water from the trough runs it through the same setup you can see it's got holes drilled in it you got your filter media it's just uh, I picked all this up right here from Bob's tropical fish from the Koei pond section um, and then at the bottom you have your carbon now I put my carbon in the secondary and not in the the, first, the primary because uh, your carbon is going to absorb everything that comes by and so you get a lot more longevity out of your carbon if you've got it in your secondary over your primary due to the waters that have been filtered here through the live rock and then you have most of the heavy debris gone as it's going in to this one and of course being filtered again before it hits my carbon and that's uh, that's what's really keeping the tannins out of my water keeping really good and clear water in this pond and I replace the carbon about every five to six months another big important thing was my skimmer it doesn't really do much until I feed the fish uh, when I feed them I mean I, cl I clean my squid real good of course and I'll still get about a half a cup full after a feeding a good 30 minutes after a feeding it'll be half full I'd like to go with a bigger one but this one just fits so perfect and for the last year it's been doing an awesome job so there's really no if it ain't broke don't fix it I've really tried to keep this setup as simple for me for cleaning and as cost effective as I can and with these buckets when I remove these containers to do my uh, my media changes and cleaning I can just set these on top of the buckets and that'll help flush all the heavy debris that might have accumulated on my live rock it's really made for an awesome setup hadn't spent a whole lot of money in this setup and it's worked like a champ I do have an aqua top canister filter the only reason I have that down here is I already had it from my 100 gallon that was in the house where my stingrays were originally and it's got a uv sterilization feature on it which is pretty awesome i didn't have to plumb anything in to uh to have some uv sterilization and my, my water stayed crystal clear uh, that's really i mean i'm i'm sure it helps clean some but i mean it's only rated to 100 gallons but uh that's actually when i do my water changes i just dump that filter and that's about four gallons that it holds and then I 
take the rest and you know clean the media that's in there i don't want anything to build up in that for sure and the other life-saving portion to all this is this reverse osmosis it's a max water i got it off ebay it's a six stage i've been running this one i guess it's about six or seven months old it has done flawless i use the same water from here in my reef and that'll save you a pile i i mean even if you got a smaller tank and you're having to go to the local fish store and buy their water you add it up i got maybe like 160 bucks in this unit right here and i have been using it religiously that's the only water i use on my fish or on county water no issues at all so other than that i think it about covers it and i i sure hope that maybe you found it uh informative and that if you're deciding trying to decide on something bigger for your fish you can give this a thought i'm losing a, something else i forgot to mention is i'm losing about a gallon of water a day to evaporation some days a half gallon it just depends so i don't know how that would fare inside your home like i said this is outside the humidity stays at 50 to 60 percent in this room pretty consistent so i could imagine if you had this in the middle of your floor of your house you may have some humidity issues um but as always you know if you have any questions for me comments just leave them and i'll get back to you as quick as i can i'm no expert on this but i have been keeping critters for several years and i enjoy it and I hope uh, this maybe gives you some ideas and helps you out on, on keeping yours as well. Thanks for watching.